Miss Liv Harrison. Welcome to the Called and Caffeinated Podcast. Super happy you are finally my guest here. I love having you. I love catching up. This is awesome. It's been a little while because I, well, let's see. It's been since March when you were so amazing with yeah. the Be Not Afraid conference. That's yeah. right. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. Was that March? It oh, was March. Stacey. Weird, huh? Well, that- March was like 18 months long. So it, it just <laughs> ended. It just <laughs> Nobody knows that. That's why fall is here because March just ended last right. week. So. I think it was actually like 18 years ago. Like March was 18 <laughs> months long and then For real. and then the summer was 18 years long. I think, I mean, yeah. seriously. So, I feel like we should have already had Christmas. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of annoyed. <laughs> I think in but my mind- you. It's good to see you too. It's in my mind, you're like ca- filed away in the category of like old friends. You yeah, know, like- <laughs> no, I'm right there. You can just pick me up whenever. You don't need to worry about it. I'll be you're right there. Way I'm there. back. Yeah, we go I'm way waiting. back. You know really all the fine. stories about my childhood. I feel, <laughs> <laughs> aka oh, my true. first conference when I when I was like, what is happening? Yeah, like, you've done like 12 conferences and you've done workshops. You made up that's things. That's what it feels and, like. like. This content. I'm pretty sure I also busy. ran a marathon. I'm pretty sure I yeah, ran I a marathon. You did. It's called yeah. making a baby. You're doing a lot, <laughs> Stacey. You're doing a lot. So. Oh my gosh. It's Hi. Good. It's nice to see you again. I'm right here. Right, where, see you right too. where we left off. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And you were so good. Um, you were one of the people who really stepped up during the Be Not Afraid conference because that conference came together in five days from beginning. That was unreal. It was, it was unreal. It was, I can't, I still can't believe it happened from Sunday when I had the idea to Friday when I launched and we got 44 speakers and artists and you really stepped up helping coordinate. Oh, we had that big vendor hall. That's right. We had oh, all we did. Catholic we did. makers and Catholic uh, artisans who are part of this, uh, part of this uh, vendor hall, essentially an, a, a virtual version of an exhibit hall. Wow. That was really hard to say. No, and listen, you were a visionary, Stacey. Yeah, <laughs> you, you're crazy? a visionary. You made up all this stuff and now everybody's having a conference and everybody's Isn't having whatever funny? online. Yeah. You made it up. Well, though, and I'm just like, the Holy Spirit yeah, I was on did. that train. I was on that train. I was like, <laughs> I'm running. And I ran, and I caught the end of the caboose. <laughs> you got, like, no, oh my gosh. You were okay, right I, up on oh, the I engine. I was so excited. I was, I believed in you. And I just awesome. had an in-person conference in yes. March with live humans. If you remember humans and they, no, you know, I like don't. Would, I, yeah, they would get together in rooms. It was yes. fascinating. I know. And inside. Uh, and so that's why I was like, Oh dear baby Jesus, I'm going to help her because I had literally just done. Did you just, and so I know okay. what that looks like, you know? It's and so I know crazy. what it also is a one woman show, which is, I mean, I know you had help. I know, but it's you not were like my you, had, like, you were my help. <laughs> <laughs> you were my help. <laughs> no, you had some Seriously. other people too. But it's not like you had like a board of directors or like mm-hmm. uh, you know like a creative team. Like you were like, nope. "Hi, I'm Stacy. Jesus spoke to me last night." Everybody, get out a pencil and a paper. So anyway, that's how it, that's how it went. It, it was, was great. To be. It was my pleasure. Yeah, and you did phenomenal. phenomenal. You're so sweet. Thank yeah, you. It was great. You're so sweet. It was, it was an amazing time. And it was so good to have you encouraging me. I think that was one of those things where when I, so our topic today is the feminine genius. And when I think about feminine genius, which I know very little about, one of the, the things to me that seems like it would be part of feminine, feminine genius is encouraging others. It seems like it's um, a, it, within a woman's genius to nurture uh, if she chooses to cooperate with that. And you very much nurtured me. Um, oh. So yeah, let's make, which is Thank true. Cause you. I needed that. I was, wow. a little, I, I was a little baby conference host. And so oh, yeah, now you're like an expert. I feel like I should change my um, Instagram handle from the live Harrison to Catholic cheerleader. I feel like I'm kind of getting mm-hmm. like, and I'm okay with it. Like I love it. Cause I love, there's nothing I love more than like making a big poster with your face on it and screaming out your name and Aww. throwing confetti at you. Like, I think that's super fun. So I think I'm the like, world yeah, needs- I might have to start out another. <laughs> the <laughs> world Instagram needs handle. more people like you. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. And it, and it, um, it, it is such a gift to have a person like you when you're in a situation like I was, you know, it, it's just, oh, thank you, you know, cause I think there's so much compare comparison and competition yes. with women. 
And to, to eliminate that and to just be people and just build each other up is so good and beautiful and refreshing. And all of the, all of the female speakers that I know that I really vibe with are all women who do that for one another. It's not a competition of who gets more speaking engagements. It's an actual community. Like we're thinking with the kingdom mindset of this is, we all want to be in heaven partying together. That's the ultimate picture that we're going for here. And so it doesn't matter how successful you are or how successful I am. I'm encouraging you to build up the kingdom. I'm building the kingdom in the ways that I'm called to, because we know that we're called to something different. Right. Same goal. And it's rant. The same goal, we're getting there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think that yeah. I think that's really beautiful, and I think that it's really nice to see on social media such a push towards that. Yes. And I don't think that anybody sat down and was like, "Oh, let's be really mean and meet the Mean Girls." I mean, this, yeah. the great movie Mean Girls came out. Tina Fey kind of captured this incredible concept of junior high, high school, let's be honest, college. And then nobody really talks about like, oh, but this continues into real life. And Mm -hmm. it continues in mom culture, Mm -hmm. you know, pretty heavy. And it continues into social media. But there are some really great pockets of places where, you know what, that isn't actually a thing. And I think we actually start believing like, oh, well, I should be ready for the competition. I should be ready for her to be ugly and to backstab me because that's Mm -hmm. what girls do. And when you find yourself in a community that that's not what's happening, you're like, oh, okay. So this isn't every community of women. It is certain communities of women. That's life. That's like anything in life, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, so mm-hmm. I think we're very blessed. This Catholic community that we have, yeah. especially online, is beautiful. It is. And so it is. there you go. There's a lot of che- people like you. <laughs> yeah. Likewise, there's a lot of cheerleading. It's beautiful. A lot of cheerleading. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think we need to reel it back in real quick here because we yeah. still haven't gotten the first question that I asked everybody. Right. We want to know who yeah. you are. Who's Liv Harrison? So <laughs> what calls have you received from God in your life so far? And what has receiving those calls looked and felt like? It's so interesting. I feel like my calls, you know, came early, but I didn't know what they meant. If that seems fair. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I kind of misinterpreted a lot of the calls, you know, the second half of that question about like, how did it, you know, like, what did that feel like or look like Mm -hmm. or whatever um, is like, I kind of confused validation from other humans as God trying to speak to me, you know, I, I, or I I like equated in my head. I'm like, Oh, Stacy wants me for her podcast. That means Jesus thinks I'm great. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it's like, (laughs) like so dumb. It's like, that's not a call from God. Um, but you're not alone. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like my value and my worth comes through what other people give me. So I think differentiating between what a call from God is, is very distinct. And I talk about this a lot, but I'm a really big cheerleader, I'll just reuse that word, um, advocate actually for a program called Strength Finders. And it's a great book and you take a cool. test and you end up with your top five strengths. And from those top five strengths, you're supposed to then improve on them. So instead of in school, when you're like, wow, I really stink at chemistry, I should get a tutor for chemistry and try to be a chemist when I grow up. It's more of, I'm really phenomenal in English. I should go to English camp. I should go to English school. I, I'm making up things. These are terrible. <laughs> the worst metaphor I've ever given in my life. So <laughs> it's been in the discovery of my five strengths that I really started to see where God had already called me. Does this make sense? I'm kind of like a wreck. Record- like I'm kind of seeing it in reverse. I'm kind yes. of seeing it like, oh, Oh, I see there. I Mm. see where he was there. Mm. I see why I have this gift, talent, strength here. Like, does that make sense? So I feel like the older I get, the more it's like revealed to me. I see how these things work together and how you're asking me to move into the space. Mm. So it's interesting that you're saying this to me now because I moved into a professional space uh, two and a half years ago. And that's where I've definitely, when you decide that you're going to put it on the line, I mean, everybody thinks, oh, being professional is really cool or like whatever, or I don't know if people think that's cool. I have no idea what people think, (laughs) but what it really means is you're now vulnerable. You now are doing things on a larger stage, quote unquote, scale. So people know if you fail or if you don't fail, you know, with your callings, if it's a professional calling. 
So in the, in the, you know, in that realm, I, I definitely have learned to listen to my gut which I now understand um, very mm-hmm. differently. It's like being a mom when you're a first time mom and you're like, I don't know how to keep this thing alive. And then by the second <laughs> kid, you're like, please go ahead, kid, lick the outlet. I know we're going to be fine. Like whatever, you know, don't lick outlets, kids. That was a joke. Don't lick outlets. <laughs> don't lick outlets. You're a lot more confident. Your confidence, yes. you, rem- you now are in tune to, oh, when they do this, that usually means this, that means that they're dirty or they're wet or they're hungry. You know, you, you really Mm -hmm. come into your own. And I don't think it's any different than our relationship with God and how he calls us. You start to recognize and you start to differentiate the voices, the validation from people, your issues, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. and you really are settled with this. Okay. And so the, the biggest time I ever heard God was at my genius conference, the women's Mm -hmm. uh, Catholic women's conference that I, wrote, direct, put on, um, and we've done it twice now in Texas. And the very first one, I was sitting there Saturday night and I legit, I mean, legit felt God in my heart, no lie. And say to me, like, I'm not kidding. Like it was a profound experience. I was looking at this room, 150 people all around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary Lindenberg is on the stage giving the keynote. Mm -hmm. And I look all around and I, I heard him say, because one of my big huge gifts is connection networking that's what i'm known for everybody's like oh call Liv, she'll know i'm or she'll yes. you. like that yes. is what i'm known for and i love it and i heard god say you have always connected others to each other but this is the first time you've ever connected for me wow it was unbelievable that's really cool right and i mm-hmm. i then knew i was like wow this is what i'm supposed to do with these gifts you know what Amazing. i mean to connect people and not just there but to get them to god like to actually do it for him so Beautiful. that was a, that was a big moment i don't know if i answer your question that was the longest thing i ever. love it no i think <laughs> i actually every everything you were saying i resonate with all of that and you know, it took me back to a time when you, when you said that you look back at your callings and you can realize, oh, that's what God was doing there. That's what God was doing there. That is so true. And I think this is why it's so hard to be a young person is you don't yet have that perspective to look back, especially when you're a teenager. College, you get a little bit of perspective, but not a whole lot. But I've kept a diary for years and I can look back and I can see those intangible things that I desired back when I was in high school, back when I was in college, those haven't changed. What's really changed is the outward um, manifestation of them. So for example, I really, yeah, like I really thought that theater was what I was meant to do with my life because I wanted to uh, help. I wanted to inspire people. I wanted them to feel happy. I wanted to have the sense of community. I loved the sense of community about doing shows and I wanted um, to lift people up. But, and that, that desire has never changed. That's why I do this podcast. That's why I did the conferences I've done. That's why I'm a speaker. And, you know, that's why I'm with my husband and that's why I form community with my family and other families. I'm very passionate about all of those things, but how I live them now looks very different than when I was in New York auditioning, feeling like I desire this. Why is this not working out? Why doesn't this feel right? Even though the I have this desire in one way, but it's not being fulfilled in the way that I thought it would be. And that's really, um, it's a gift. Yes. And those intangible desires. Yeah. I was thinking about this not too long ago um, because those, those intangibles, if you're, if you're struggling to find where you're called, you can, you can go and look back and Mm -hmm. ask other people who know you really well, or look back at your diary and say, what, what have I desired my whole life? What have I really been going for my whole life? And sometimes it's just really hard to acknowledge these things. (laughs) You, uh, I think a lot of us, and you mentioned this in our little convo via text before we were, when we were talking about what we were going to talk about, um, like girls do <laughs> Yeah, <right. laughs> talking the about pre-talk. what we're going to talk about the yeah. pre-talk before the talk. Um, you were, you know, sharing how you kind of never quite felt comfortable or you never felt like you were where you were supposed to be. And I resonate with that too, because I, it was really hard for me to acknowledge for a very long time that, that I actually didn't want the glory of theater or the spotlight of theater. What I really wanted was more the community and the, mm-hmm. the ability to inspire. And so it was kind of, I had to dial back my pride and be like, 
no girl, this isn't actually what you want. You got to start over again, which was a very scary thing. You got to go to zero and you got to just work your job as a waitress and not, you know, and just (laughs) start building from zero and stop going to auditions and create that space. And finally, when I did that, that's where God was able to finally come in and have a space in my heart because before it had been just I just been filling it with everything else. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So then, Absolutely. then we could, yeah, then we could really get to what are these intangible desires that haven't changed. Um, yeah. I love, oh, man, I love talking about this stuff and it's, it's, it's great. No, it's, it awesome? nice. And it's nice to be on this side because mm-hmm. you know, again, it's, it's not anything, it's part of the journey. I mean, you got to figure that yes. out. And I think, I, th- I think you're exactly right. Nailing it about, you know, I, it's these, certain gifts or talents or desires or wants or whatever. And we get in the way because you're young, Mm -hmm. you know, and you're just like, oh, well, then that means I'm going to do this. And then when all that isn't panning out, but yet you still have these desires and you still have these giftings and strengths, you're like, well, where do these go? And, And how does that work out? And then just through experience and from trial and error, you do, you start to, it's like, it's, uh, you know, like you sift it out, you kind of like filter it out and you, and you start settling into, oh, this is how I can create. This is how I can inspire. This is how I can, you know, do what it is that I do. So it's really fun, but yeah, it's definitely something I had to look back at. (laughs) Yes. And I love too, how you talked about specializing. Don't be afraid to specialize because when I was, and I understand this in a new way as a, now as a conference host, when I think about filling a difference, you know, a certain set of topics for a conference that I'm giving, which I did for the God's Adventure Await Summit, not for the Be Not Afraid conference, because that was planned in five days, but for the God's Adventure Await Summit, I needed some to talk about this topic and this topic and this topic. And I thought, you know, certain people came to mind as this would be a person who'd be great to talk about this topic. And the fact that they specialized and that they talked about only one thing or maybe two things was great because I thought, perfect. They're the go-to person for this topic. That's what we're going to do. And so that was, that's what was so nice. And then other people, I thought, well, they're a fantastic speaker, but they just don't fit for this conference, but they're going to fit for other people's conferences. And they have. And so I, specializing is not a bad thing. It's not, it's not something that means that you're only good at one thing or, (laughs) but if you're really fantastic at one thing, that's great. That's God is using, still using you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the lies of the devil, especially for women is you have to be good at everything. If you're not good at everything, you're not good enough. (laughs) Yeah. You have to please everybody. Yeah, no, that is absolutely a struggle for, for women. And something else I struggle Mm -hmm. with is I have a lot of, um, things that I love. I was never the girl that like would walk in and be like, Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to decorate my house this way. You know, like I had Mm. friends that are very into like the farmhouse situation and they love Magnolia and they love Waco and they love, you know, they watch all the things and everything is with shiplap and you know, all the whatever. (laughs) And like, I'm the person that would be like, so I'd love a room like that, but then this mm-hmm. room is going to be like the Vegas room. And then this room is Paris. And like, yeah. I'm that personality. Mm-hmm. And that's difficult sometimes because it's like, oh, like trying to narrow down and get it. It is hard. So yeah. It's, yeah. it's a, you know, it's a, it's, it's a lot out there and it takes a while to figure it all out. And that's what I would yes. love people to understand. It's okay if you haven't. And mm-hmm. also the other key is it doesn't mean that you're done just because you start getting some of it together and like start to understand a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mean, well, now you're complete or now Absolutely. it all makes complete crystal clear. It just yeah. means, okay, you have a little bit of clarity of where to continue putting yeah. your energy. And also it it doesn't mean that God can't use all of your things that you love to do because there is what it probably means that there's going to be an intersection of five things that you love that are going to be, you're going to use it in a particular way that no one else is. But I think I love that. I want to read that book strength finder. So I'll put a link. Oh yeah. Strength finders is a legit like university systems use it like in uh, Baylor university in Waco in Texas every student has to do it and it has to go on every email they have their top five it has to be on their dorm room, every professor. So it's like mm. a legit, it's fantastic. If you're nice. running any type of business in your family, it would be great because mm. you really understand, Oh, Stacy's really great at this. Liv is not. So we don't want live for this, you know? So, you know, it just kind of gives you like, 
It's yeah. good. Yeah, you know yeah, where yeah. people are so they can be yeah. successful. Because that's what yes. you want to do with yourself, everybody. You want to be successful, set yourself up for success. Mm-hmm. I say to people all the time, don't take your toddler to a steak dinner at 10 p.m. at night and then hate your toddler. That's your fault. Like that did not set up your <gasps> toddler for success. Right. Same thing with yourself. You have to be gentle. So, Mm, so true. So let's talk about the feminine genius. What is the feminine genius? I I usually prepare for my conversations, but I was like, (laughs) I'm going to put myself along with, you know, along with any listeners who have not really, who have heard the term feminine genius maybe for years, but haven't actually read that much about it. So just, just lay it out for us, please. Yeah. So the easiest, here's the beautiful thing. It was that phrase is, is given to and coined by, I mean, I don't know if that's official, official, but what we say in the Catholic world is that Pope John Paul II coined the frame, the feminine genius in a letter to women that he wrote. And I believe it was 91, July of 91. It's either 91 or 94. I don't know why I always want to mix those two up. Probably because I, I don't know, probably when I was. Probably because it was the 90s. It was the 90s, (laughs) early 90s. Can we just say that? And I I know somebody's going to write and tell, but it's easy to, you can Google, it's it's a homework assignment. Anyway, so early 90s in the summer, July, he wrote a letter to women. So in the Catholic church, um, the, that's very common for popes and important figures to write letters. They're also called what epistles. Is that how we say it? It's like the official word. Epistle okay. would be, yeah. Mm-hmm. Epistle is it a letter. Yeah. Look, at how, mm-hmm. look how much we're teaching theology. Okay. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Who cares? No one says that in America. We say letter. So he wrote a letter to women. <laughs> and what was beautiful about it was he was kind of the first which is similar to what he did with, you know, relationships, like sexual relationships, you know, and and calling stuff out and saying how beautiful and just saying a lot of things that other popes had not said, right? Mm -hmm. He did this with women and he went into great detail about what it is that women bring to the world and, and why their presence is necessary and why, and, and where their place is in the church and not in the bad way, not like, okay, ladies, your place is in the kitchen. Like, not like that. Okay. (laughs) But that he was calling out and saying women absolutely belong in the church. Women absolutely belong on the planet. Here's why. And here's what they bring to the table. So it was a Mm. beautiful letter. And it was so great that it was written by a man and written Mm. by now a saint, right. And a Pope. Mm -hmm. And especially from an organization, let's be honest, that in the past, and probably I would assume people still have an issue with the Catholic Church and where they put women, quote unquote, it was a great and, and forward movement and really be- before its time. So mm-hmm. he coined the phrase, he said, the feminine genius. And what's so beautiful about that is it reminds me of the film Still Magnolias. I don't know if you're familiar with that movie at all. I actually have one. not watched that one, no, but I've heard, I've heard it referenced. shocks me. Shocks me. Well, you should be shocked. Is, I, I am. I, I'm shocked because you've homework it. for but me. I, homework for you. Yes. Because uh, the guy that wrote it was actually best friends with my mom in college. And he wrote it for about his um. sister. And when he coined the phrase still magnolias, it's a beautiful concept, right? Because yeah. women, and there's a line in the film that Sally Field says, um, and she says, you know, men were, men are supposed to be made of steel or something. But when her daughter dies, she said, you know, they had to leave the room. They couldn't stay there, but I stayed and I held her hand. And I was there when that beautiful creature drifted into my life. And I was there when she drifted out. And it's this beautiful concept of women. And I'm getting back Mm -hmm. to the point of feminine genius. It's this thing that women are, yes, delicate. They're, yes, feminine. Yes, they're dainty and lovely. And they smell like violets. And they only drink tea with their pinkies up and only like the color pink. You know, like they like to put women in this box. But let's be real. As you and I were chatting earlier, women give birth. And if anybody has done that, that isn't pink and violets. And, you know, there's no pinkies in the air when you're giving birth to someone. You know what I mean? Like that is not a dainty moment. That is not your most feminine, but it is the most feminine moment. You know what I mean? It's not. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's this concept of what really, really, what women really are. They're strong. They can be beautiful, but like a magnolia, the magnolia blossom, like the flower is a 
thick, hearty flower. It's not, it's not a dainty, wispy, mm. little violet that's like, oh, you plucked me, I died. Like, it's like hearty, you know? <laughs> yes. It's like Caroline Ingalls. So the feminine genius yes. <laughs> really wrapped up all these concepts. It didn't just put women in a box of she has to be lovely and curl her hair and only speak like this. And mm. you know what I mean? Like, Right. Perhaps some of the external, women. yeah, perhaps some of the external things that we think about of women dressing right. in, in a feminine Correct. way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which it, it was the first, yeah. it was the first time on the, on the scene that somebody said, hold on, mm-hmm. let's really talk about women and what mm-hmm. that really means. Not what mm-hmm. society has told us it mm-hmm. is or what they mm-hmm. should be and, and where they are. Like, I mean, in the Bible, women are severely very nicely represented. I mean, in all the important things, women are there, usually the first, and um, and in the most significant role. And the Pope was was bringing that to the table, and mm-hmm. he was saying, "Guys, like you cannot dismiss this whole sec- you know part of people." So that's what the yeah. feminine genius it's to kind of give you. You really kind of need to have that background. Because otherwise, it's just these words, you know. It's just oh, right. you know, like love. Right. Does it mean right. we say it so much? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to give the the hit the the grit. Yes, that's so interesting. So it's almost like it sounds like it's it's a a beauty, but within there's a strength that is not necessarily immediately perceptive in the same way that like a very muscular man where his muscles are out for all to see and you just, and that's a beautiful thing too. And you're like, wow, what a beautiful creation of God. But women are at first glance, beautiful, but then on the inside, there's a strength that comes out at the needed moments at the needed times. (laughs) I feel like as a mom for me on a daily basis, it has to come out um, because it is not motherhood is not for sissies. Um, And, and it sounds too like uh, you mentioned St. John Paul the Great was also talking about like w- how women need to be in the world. Like we need to be out exactly. there. Yeah. That's what did exactly he say? Right. What did he say about uh, about the particular gifts that like the way that the feminine yeah. genius has lived? Well, that's also what was so cool because yeah, he kind of it was almost like strength finders for women Catholic. <laughs> like he went into what you know what is so beautiful, and he does call out and he he says specifically like women in the workforce, women in this, women in whatever, and. And he, he didn't, it wasn't a letter saying, ladies, put on an apron, take off your shoes, get pregnant, and just bake casseroles. <laughs> First of all, is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. If, mm-hmm. if you are pregnant in a kitchen baking casserole right now without shoes on, first of all, amen. That's your feminine genius. Like that, that was the whole, he was giving permission is really how I interpreted the letter. Mm-hmm. Permission mm-hmm. for women to bring their specific gifts there that there's these gifts that womenhood bring to the table the nurturing we are we are nurturing mm-hmm. we are emotional mm-hmm. we are different than men he was kind of calling out saying like look in case y'all haven't noticed they're different than us you know yes and thank god <laughs> no doubt about you that know, we need no that. doubt yeah. about and, that right and the church needs us mm-hmm. we are necessary and then he did go into the different types of you know like the different types of women and and not to shame it wasn't it's not a shameful letter it's an empowering letter mm. it it just is really beautiful every woman is touched there so what if you haven't had a child do you no longer have a feminine genius mm. let's talk about that because in the catholic church a lot of times people found their their worth as being quote unquote catholic enough with how many mm. children they've produced yes how quickly they've produced these children yes. um what about if you're divorced what about if you didn't wait until marriage? So now you're not feminine. We should throw mm-hmm. you away. It's just, it's, it's really having these conversations. That's what I equate feminine genius to is how every woman on the planet, but without the line of, you know, you do you. That's what the secular world says, right? Like, oh, but it's okay. Right. You do you, you be whatever kind of lady you want. You just go out there and do all the things and you just, who cares? You know, <laughs> yeah, have multiple husbands and have children and whatever, da, da, da. you know, like that's not at all what it's saying. It's saying for the first time, you were created a woman for a reason. And that's something that the world is trying to tell us right now. Mm. There is no gender. There's no woman. You're whatever you feel. It's all about feelings. Mm. And the Pope was saying, 
This is something that is intentional. The feminine mm-hmm. genius was created intentional. Look at Mary. Look at her. Not specifically like what you're saying about the external. I mean, yes, look at that. But there's things that she brings to the table that Jesus didn't bring in their humanity, mm-hmm. right? Right. right. And, and you see it time and again. And you see with Mary Magdalene. And you see the other mm-hmm. women who are featured. And they are featured in a different way. The woman that, that got on her knees and washed Jesus' feet, that was different. None of the men did that, right? you know? And right. so that's what he was highlighting about. That's the feminine genius, that whole concept of the fact that women do things differently than men. And then he took mm-hmm. it a little step further and said, and you can fit in here no matter what you're doing as a woman. It's okay if you're working. It's okay if you're there. And nobody had really said that before. Mm-hmm. So it's really giving the permission, I think, to women yeah. Within the, the constraints of, you know, of like life, like, like I said, you can't just go off and. Right. Right. Within the, con- the within the constraints of morality and Correct. prudence Correct. to live out your individual calling from God in whatever way he created you. But then, so there's kind of, it sounds like a universal aspect to it. And then also a, an individual aspect. So it's going to yes, be a exactly. different a call. Lot. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, gosh, so many thoughts. One thought that I have is. I wanted to ask about how, if he talks about women in complementarity to men, because <laughs> there's one time where I took my kids to a little children's museum and there's a little boy there with his mom and he's wearing a t-shirt that says anything dad can do, mom can do better. And I was like, who put that little boy in that t-shirt? <laughs> because it sure wasn't his dad. And yeah, I right, don't know, right. I don't know what is in that woman's past. I don't know where she comes from or what she's, you know, what she's thinking when she dresses her five-year-old boy in that t-shirt. But that is, I find a mistaken ideal out there right now. Maybe not ideal idea out there that we are, we are celebrating women in 2020, which is amazing. But also sometimes it goes to, to this mistaken idea that we have to do everything a man can do and do it better. You see a lot of movies now where the heroine uh, out muscles the men or at, you know, in a fight scene, she'll beat up a man who's physically much more muscular than she is. And that's, that's a little unrealistic, (laughs) like in a, in a real life situation, that's just never going to happen for, for me, no matter how hard I train, I'm not going to be able to physically beat up my husband. Not that I'm going to try to do that. That went a very weird (laughs) direction for a minute, but you know what I mean? It's the concept of everything a man can do, a woman can do better. So what is, what would John Paul II say about that? No, I'm so glad you brought this up because it is Mm -hmm. a miss. I know that it is smoke and mirrors from the devil. I know he wants us Mm -hmm. to look over here. And and what's really sad is like, you know, um, in order to be a feminist, you have to believe those things. You have to believe like, oh, women are better and we don't need men. And and Mm. you see the pendulum swing where women had to be in a kitchen doing all this. Again, nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying like society. Women had to, you know, all these things. This is what women do. This is women's work. This is women's whatever. And, mm-hmm. and there are roles, but then it swung to the other side. Like, should women be able to vote in the presidential election? Yes, of course we should. Like, you know what I mean? Like there were some things that needed to be corrected. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Can a woman have a job? Should you and I be allowed to go and speak to people? Yes, of course. Mm-hmm. So there, there had to be some swinging, right, of the pendulum. Like we needed it <laughs> right. to move. I'm not right. saying we right. didn't. We absolutely <laughs> did. But where it went, right, as a whole, to this point where this lie of we are equal to men. We don't want to be equal to men. That's the well, point. We are, we are equal. Genius. Wait, wait, wait. But wait, we are wait, not. And, and, okay, go ahead. I'm not done. Ahead. I'm not done. Okay, okay. We, we, want to, we want to be women. We were created to be women, period. Are we equal to men in dignity? Yes. Mm -hmm. In humanity. Yes. Mm -hmm. But in the things that men were put on this planet to do, like physicality, like what you're saying, I mean, that's, Mm -hmm. that's science. There's men are going to be, are some women going to be stronger than some men? Yes, of course. Are some, you know, men going to be weaker than women? Yes, physically, of course. But we're talking about like, there are specific things that men were put on this planet to do that women were supposed to do that was designed by God in a beautiful way, Mm -hmm. not in a bad way, Mm. not in a gross way. That's what the feminine genius is doing is empowering and saying, instead of looking at the kid's paper next to you, look at your paper. Here's Mm -hmm. your paper. Here's your test. 
Now go kill it. You know, mm-hmm. you were put here to do this, but it's the same concept of like between you and me as women, instead of me trying to be Stacy and do all the things Stacy does, mm-hmm. I should put all my energy in being me and what I do. So I think the distraction of we've got to be men, just like men, just the same as men. I'm not saying you shouldn't be CEO of a bank. I don't care. Like, that's not what I'm saying. It's the lie of you're not amazing. You're not extraordinary. You're not equal to men unless you do all the things men do. Mm -hmm. What I find fascinating Mm -hmm. is you never see a group of men around each other crying that they don't have a uterus. You never hear that. You never (laughs) hear men say, I want to be just like a woman. I wish I had a uterus. I'm so mad. I don't have a period. I've never heard that. But it's really fascinating that women who we have gifting that is so beautiful and so unique, Mm -hmm. we've been distracted to say, I want to be just like that instead of, hold on, what are my strengths? Mm -hmm. What is beautiful about my femininity? What Mm -hmm. is beautiful about being a woman? And let me improve that before I start looking around saying what else? Mm -hmm. Um, and like I said, does that mean you could be the CEO of a bank? Absolutely. Like mm-hmm. uh, 100%, but it's the secular world of saying you got to drink like a man, spit like a man, cuss like a man, act like a man, have sex like a man. And that's what really opened up this whole Pandora's box is with birth mm-hmm. control, because mm-hmm. then women could go and do all the things that, that men could do without the consequences. Right. And that was society saying, and now you're equal. Now you're equal. Right. Now you're the same. Mm-hmm. And, and so the lie is, is that that's where our equality lays, lies, lies but yeah. it doesn't, it's in our dignity, right? As humans mm-hmm. and as people. And so the feminine genius is giving you the permission and showing you, here's why, here's why you were created female. It wasn't an accident. And here's right. why you're female and what that means and what the, what women bring this an incredible, incredible movie called, um, the life of Peter. And it's a true story of an Episcopalian man. And um, Hmm. in it is an incredible monologue and I'll have to send it to you. And the film was made in the fifties and she stands up this woman who he actually ends up marrying. He didn't Hmm. know who she was. It was at a youth rally and all the girls are sitting there smoking cigarettes. Again, there's nothing wrong with smoking cigarettes, everybody. I mean, it's just, it's showing you, it's the concept of what they were trying to show. And they're like, you know, not sitting like ladies and like whatever. This was the fifties. So there was a lot of stereotypes Uh and she gets up and they start whistling and saying all this stuff. And she goes, are you whistling because I'm a girl and because you think I'm pretty? Is that what you think I bring to the table? Because at the time, that's what women brought. And so she, um, or that's, that's what was assumed that people thought. And mm-hmm. so she said, you know, back in the day, men wrote poetry about women and how beautiful they were and how their beauty inspired them to be better men. I mean, beauty's there for a reason, right? All that's true, good, and beautiful is there. Mm-hmm. And that's how God, you know, does whatever. And she goes on and says to stuff. He says, when was the last time a man wrote to you saying, because that cigarette's hanging out of your mouth, I want to marry you and did it. Like she goes into this whole thing and she talks about like, she's empowering these women, like be a woman, be a woman. And if you want to do those things, that's fine. But why are you doing them? And that's the point. It's not about the things it's about why are you doing those things? And as mm. women, the empowerment is if you want to do them because you want to do them, that's fine. But if you're doing mm. them because you think you're supposed to, to outshine a man like an Annie and get your gun, mm. that's something you need to think about. That's right. Right. That's and really that's what, that letter, that's what that letter did. Yeah, that's really good. Another lie that I know has been spoken to me many times by the devil is the lie that you also have to be, we touched on this earlier. You also have to be like other women. You have to be Catholic enough. You have to be uh, the homeschooling mom. You have to be the, you know, it's, there's a, you could, you could stretch this any imaginable way because you can guilt yourself because you don't homeschool your kids. You can also guilt yourself because you don't have, 
um, a job and send your kids to school. <laughs> there's, and I know women, it's amazing. There's women who homeschool their children and they're, they say their mothers are asking them, why aren't you out there with a job now that your kids are school age? Why are you homeschooling them? And I know other mother, other mothers who are feel guilty because they don't homeschool their children because they sent their children to school. There's a, there's a comparison within women, not just women to men, but women to woman of you have to be like this other woman in order to be a woman. So can you speak to that at all about what? No, that's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, because my story, um, you know, I kind of shared a little bit with you in texting, but my story is interesting because I came out on the scene, not like the other girls and not in the cute way to say that, like, oh, I'm so different. No, like legit. I used to weigh 458 pounds. <laughs> no way. I can. Well, yes. I, did, I did not know for that. About fact, you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for a fact, so when you walk into a room at 458 pounds, you're different than everybody because mm-hmm. nobody else comes in the room that way. People have problems with weight. Sure. But that's an extreme morbid obesity. When Mm -hmm. I went to my first doctor, um, to correct this whole situation and the beginning of that journey, a 15 year process, uh, I wasn't even on the BMI chart. I was not even on it. That's how how you at that point. Yeah. How old were you? I was 25. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a long story. We're not here to talk about that, but the point is, is that Uh, yeah, when you don't fit the mold, right? Women are supposed to be beautiful. They're supposed to be tiny. They're supposed to be, you have a baby and then you hiccup and you lost all the baby weight three weeks later, like, you know, (laughs) and you can fit into all the things, you know, or, oh my gosh, I've only gained 10 pounds this pregnancy. You guys, I only like to lick (laughs) peas. Like, They do. They, it it goes all these different ways or whatever, you know, like you can, like you said, you can find it for everything. Breastfeeding, sharing a bed with your child, not having a baby, not having a husband yet, not going to college. I don't know. Pick a topic. Right. Getting married young or getting married older. Either way, you're too young to get married. You're too old to get married. Either way. Anything. Anything. You're never going to get anything. Yeah. Yeah, literally yeah. anything. And social media has just really, and not to play bad guy with the social media, but these conversations are now just more frequent because we can read them all the time. People yes. can tell you their opinion all the time and they can yes. post their opinion. They can be passive aggressive all the time. Yes. You know, they put these things out. So yes, comparison between women, we have a problem, especially because now it's so in our face. It's like the porn industry. Pornography has been here forever i'm sure on cave Mm -hmm. walls there's probably erotic cave wall drawings you know what i mean (laughs) this this isn't a new concept but (laughs) now that you have an iphone which is more powerful than the computer when it first came on the scene Mm -hmm. it's up a notch okay cave draw cave drawings of porn and constant stream of pornography you Mm -hmm. guys it's a different conversation right so it's not to say that these things didn't exist they did but we're having to deal with it on such a level. And I think as, as yeah. women, our identity as women is being attacked, you know, mm-hmm. um, there's a, that's a whole other thing. And, and so with each other. And so, yeah, the problem is this, Stacey, we don't have a feminine identity to begin with. So we will grasp at the one closest to us mm. and we will put that on. And we'll put it on if it's what a man has said. We'll put it on if it's what our mother has said. We'll put it on if it's what our roommate said. Mm-hmm. I don't care who it is. So the closest yeah. identity of femininity or, you know, whatever, that's what you're going to, until the next conversation and you feel guilty, you know, oh, well, I don't cook with corn. Oh my gosh, you're right. I'm not a woman at all. You know, whatever, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> People out there going, you cook? Yeah. So, you know, it is, we don't have a grounded, solid identity in being a female. Yeah. So yeah, therefore we're searching and that's what you're seeing. Right. That is so true. As you're trying to figure out who to be and what to be and what that even looks like, you have good role models in your life they're still going to be flawed in a sense. Of course, they're human. They're going to be flawed yeah. because they're humans. And some, and I noticed this from some of my early female role models, they had flawed ideas about themselves as women, about what a woman should do and how a woman should look. And 
And that led to me picking those things up. Not that I'm not responsible for my own life because I am, but it took me a long time to identify and really try to unspin those. So if there's a woman listening, who's like, you're right. I've been listening to lies. (laughs) How would you go? How would you advise her to go ahead and just start uh, figuring out uh, this your concept of woman and yes, living the sort of the individual side of your feminine. Sure. Genius. Yeah. No, because that's, that's very fair. And, and yeah. it, you have to start as absolutely simple as it sounds. You mm-hmm. have got to be direct with God. Um, I like to make the joke. This is a joke. Everybody. I like to make a joke that, well, I mean, he is a man, so I have to be direct. So <laughs> a joke of God. Okay. And it's not a man. Okay. Anyway, but really and truly just a little humor, you have to be direct. So if there's something you specifically want to discover about yourself, so we'll stay with the feminine genius, then you start making that, put that in your mouth. As the kids like to say, get me out of your mouth. Why are you talking about me all the time? Put it in your mouth, say it all the time. Mm. That is what you start Mm -hmm. talking about to him. And he is going to be the one to reveal it to you to the point where you start to that gut we were talking about, you know, about like learning about your gut. Mm -hmm. when you're going to start learning, do I want to smoke a cigarette because I want to do it to impress these guys? Or do I, no, I really like smoking cigarettes. It's something I enjoy. And a lot of people do, you know, it's not a sin. You got, I mean, like, it's not like, it's not a mortal sin. Mm -hmm. So you have to start it's all about intention. So mm-hmm. you, you have to start like editing and you edit like how you would with a f- like food allergy or however else you would edit things in your mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody likes to go into the whole minimalist kind of thing. Sure. Do this, but with yourself, do a self yeah. inventory, check in, be real. Why do I like whiskey? Well, I like whiskey, <laughs> you know, like that's a no brainer. Me too. <laughs> I enjoy beer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Oh, right. So it's not because I'm trying to impress the guys. Well, that one gets to stay, you yes. know, like uh, beer. Mm-hmm. I don't really like beer. I do like beer, but I'm just pretending, okay, am I just doing that because I want to hang out with my brothers? Well, then maybe that's something I can let go. And then you just kind of start whittling and then you start leaving and you find out who you are, what you like, what you don't like and what you're good at, what you're not good at. But you got to start with an inventory and you have to ask God directly and, mm. and keep asking every day, Lord, show me my femininity. Lord, show me my feminine genius. Lord, why did you mm. make me female? Lord, how can I serve you as a woman Mm -hmm. on the planet today? Mm -hmm. Be direct, be Mm -hmm. consistent, and then do a self-inventory and really check into to why you're doing the things. And then I would dig into your strengths and really discover what you're great at and then see how they serve in your feminine genius. That's, That's, that would be my three things that I would start. Oh my gosh. That's beautiful. I think I've been doing that in a less intentional way, but in a, just sort of a trial and error way, what you're mentioning, what it's been hard for me in my journey into motherhood. So I've been a mother for three and a half years now. And my oldest is three and a half. I have two and a half year old and I have, and I'm pregnant with number three. Ah, and (laughs) it's been such a wild ride because I've run into these ideas that I had in my own head of a good mother is one who stays home with her children and homeschools. And I'm honestly not sure that I have the temperament to homeschool because my children and I are happy, really happy when they have a babysitter watching them one or two mornings a week. And I think, you know what? I am my child's primary educator. Yes, that is absolutely true. But do I have to educate them all the way through high school or all, even all the way through middle school? <laughs> Not necessarily. It depend, It's a calling to homeschool. And so I've had to learn to be okay with that. And then other aspects too, I've started, I, so I started my ministry kind of officially when I was eight months pregnant with my son. So my ministry and my son have kind of grown up together. And then my daughter came very soon afterward. And it has been... Um, actually really difficult to walk that line of, I have to let go of this idea. So there's two aspects to it. One is that a lot of the female role models in my life, whom I love and admire and respect are stay at home moms who don't really understand why I would want to have another passion or another uh, job or another ministry besides motherhood. And so learning to allow myself to say, okay, this is not just a distraction from my real calling, which is motherhood. This is actually something that I am called to in addition to, and the two can work together. And then on the other hand too, I've had to let go of my idea that I have this, 
I have to be a, a career woman or I have to like hold on to this real sense of independence because I'm afraid of losing myself in motherhood. So there's a fear on both sides of not being a, enough of a mother and then being too, too much of a mother, if that makes sense. And learning to say, you know what, it's okay that um, when we're hanging out with our fam, you know, in groups or whatever, I don't always want to talk about, you know, potty training or like sometimes I want to talk about like my podcast or, you know, the, this conference I'm hosting or I want to talk about different, you know, Catholic speakers that I like to listen to. Like, I don't always have to talk about why, you know, my favorite muffins to bake. And <laughs> but then if I do want to talk about that, that's fine, too. And that there's plenty of those conversations, too, because we moms need that support of, of that home life. So I need I it's, it's kind of, it's learning to look at walking both of those paths and saying they are both okay. And they can both work together as long as I'm accountable with my husband as to whether or not this is working for our family, how much, you know, we cut out the stuff that is too much, but also I don't need to be celebrating every single liturgical feast day or else I'm a bad mom <laughs> with a liturgical tea party. Um, <laughs> Or I also don't need to be releasing every podcast right. on time or else I'm a failure as a person. Does right. that make sense? So that's that 100% sense. And mm -hmm. I think what's really, what, what, what really needs to happen with all women is they just need to be secure in what they've decided for their family, with their husband, with their kids. If we're talking about yes. married women who yes. have children. Okay. Cause I also mm -hmm. want to be very inclusive because not every woman listening is in the mom role or in the married role. Right. Or whatever Absolutely. Role. So regardless, every woman that is listening or every woman, you have to be secure of where you're at. If you're like, live, let me explain this to you. I love baking all day long. And that's all I want to do. I'm over here going, then bring me some muffins, sister. Like, let's get yes. it. In there like yes, let's do it <laughs> that's great it's yeah. not about taking away or shaming it's about those are your strengths and that is fantastic and you know get out yeah. there and be confident about it yes. but confidence not in the fact of shaming the others and same with mm -hmm. the career ladies don't get out there and be all like i'm a career lady and ow oh, all you ladies that are inside pouring cereal for your kids what losers why did you go to college no 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 we're not gonna be mm -hmm. ugly about it you want to go and do the career things and do all this great be confident we can cheer for you and we can support you mm -hmm. and it's just that middle part of like are the other girls looking at me because i'm not doing yes. who cares we're gonna leave that today right. you've got to it's, this is about you and jesus he chose your soul to be on this planet for whatever reason and you've got to figure out what is that reason and then yes. do it and do yeah. not look off your paper <laughs> okay right and don't i know it look no, right that is the enemy <laughs> That's do so it. great. And you know, I, I, yeah, right. And the devil works in the voice of self-condemnation, guilt, yes. backing you into a corner. There's no horizon. Assuming people care. He right. makes you think that's anxiety. Mm -hmm. He yeah. leads you to believe, oh, I haven't heard from Stacy in three months. She hates me. Or Stacy didn't like mm -hmm. my last four posts. We broke up as friends. Like whatever. <laughs> right. You know, like he just... You know, I offended her. Yes. Okay. How about Stacy had a kid vomit on her pants and she hasn't looked at Instagram for four days. How about that, Liv? Like, but you real. know what I'm saying? But yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. But, but we have these, these, especially now that we're not as connected as we used to be before COVID and after both mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. because of social media, we've lost the script of communication. We've lost mm -hmm. dialogue. Mm -hmm. We only have monologue in our head and we, yeah. we write everybody's other half of the story, the other half of the discussion constantly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And nine times out of 10, we're wrong. So Dang. as women, we really take that to heart. Men are a lot better. I'm making a general statement, but they, they tend to be a lot better at like, well, peace out. Who cares? They don't like my, you know, like, I don't, <laughs> they don't they're not yes. into that, you know? So, yeah. but we do, yeah. we care. Yes. So I'm just we giving, uh, that's what the feminine genius is, is permission to live an intentional life as a woman and what you were put on this planet to do. It doesn't that. matter what the other women are doing. So as mm. long as you're doing it with intention and with God, that's feminine genius. That's really yeah. what it boils down to. And That's really beautiful. Confidence. Yeah, right. Like it, it, there's so many lies that we can believe and the devil is only going to speak in those constricting, condemning, guilt, I'm not enough kind of that spirit of poverty, whereas God speaks in um, a voice of hope and a voice of enlarging 
who you, you know, a sense of enlargement, a sense of uh, challenge and invitation and acceptance and building on what you have. There's always, there's always a horizon with God, you know, there's always farther that you can go. And I love that. Like if you flip the script, instead of saying, I'm not this, I'm not that. And being unhappy about that, flip that script and say, I am this, and I am this, and I am, and that leads to such gratitude, you know, like, thank God we live in a time when we do have, when we can reach each other on social media. Thank God we live in a time where we have the internet, where I can do online conferences. Thank God I live in a time where I can reach people from the wonderful, you know, comfort of my home where I can stay home with my children, but then also have a ministry that reaches out to people through the internet. And, and also that travel is so much easier that I can go speak to people in person when it's not COVID, (laughs) you know, and that that there's all these things that we can do and really taking stock of who it is that you are and what it is that you can do individually is so hopeful to me and yeah, I just, I just it encourage everyone to do whole, that. Like, that's how we're going to work together as a yes. whole. You as an individual yes. have to be strong and knowing what you're bringing to the table and mm-hmm. not in a, that doesn't mean you have to be extraordinary. And you have to be on a stage and doing all that. It doesn't mean big. It just yeah. means you have gifts and talents and strengths that I don't have. Yeah. And we need mm-hmm. you. So, yeah. But we got, but here's the thing. You got to tell us what they are. Like you got to figure out what it is. Mm-hmm. Like why is Stacy a woman? And why am I a woman? We're bringing two different things to this table. So, but you've got to right. figure that out. And that's what really, that's the individual side. So not being individualistic, mm. but it's to work towards the goal, which is to get us all back to heaven. Yes. That's the goal. But yes. we need each other. We're a community. Jesus mm-hmm. walked around with the community. He's pro community guys. I mean, you know, two people, it takes two of them to make a new person. That's a community. Absolutely. The Trinity, it's he, God could have come out as anything. He was like, well, we're, we're going to be a Trinity, everybody. They voted. So that was a joke. <laughs> um, community is a big deal. So, but you have yes. a place in that role, you know, right. that's the point. So right. hopefully right. everybody will yeah. figure it out. <laughs> Stop looking at other people's tests. I love that. And Stop looking. I Stay think about, I, it's true. Like I think about all the girls I know with straight hair, one and curly hair, myself included, all the girls with curly hair want straight hair. And that yeah. is a lie. That is not how things are supposed to lie. be. And that's also not how you're doomed to be for your whole life, not wishing necessary. you were somebody else. Not at all. Not at all. Absolutely. It's a distraction. Yep. Yes. So true. Oh my gosh. What the devil's doing. Yes. Oh man. So I have to let you go yes, because I know I, know. I have you to go have to my prenatal life. appointment. I have to She's go be a woman. A human. She, she <laughs> does. She has a uterus. I do. I do. And it's, it's busy. Being occupied right now. It's occupied. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. busy, so. man. <laughs> No, but this is great. I hope I helped shed a yes. little bit of light. I know I'm a little out of the box it. in the way I explain stuff. I'm not. Well, I like all like, of your. You could have just gone to like catechism section 209. <laughs> That's probably nothing. Watch that be about like your animals. I don't know. But like, <laughs> I'm not that kind of a speaker. <laughs> right. You know what though? I, I love how like of all of the analogies you could have chosen for like pregnancy, you chose licking peas. I just think that's really good because I feel <laughs> like that's. brain. I, I I think it's one of your gifts, Liv, to choose things because you know what? I'm not going to forget that. I'm not going to forget what you said about licking peas. (laughs) So dumb. It's great. Jesus all the time is like, if you could stop telling people you're a speaker, that'd be great. Like, (laughs) let's go back. You're still misinterpreting, Liv. (laughs) But you know what? It's memorable. It's part of your genius. It's part of your genius. There you go. That's our genius, I guess. (laughs) No, this was so fun. And I appreciate awesome. getting to talk about it. It's an yes. important conversation to have. So, so. good. I'm going to put everything. I admire. I admire you. I <laughs> admire you too. And thank you for being a role model to me of someone who is uh, like a, an amazing cheerleader. You really, really are that way for me. So thank you. And um, not just to me, but Always. to everybody, you know, and it makes you it. look good. <laughs> Oh it God! Does. I guess Absolutely. I just want to be able to wear one of those skirts. Just want a cheerleading <laughs> skirt. That's what this is all about. It's they are pretty cute. Everyone. I They're just, pretty cute. They are right. I just yeah. oh, that's my life goal. <laughs> I do want some pom poms too. <laughs> right? Not gonna yeah. lie. I'm kidding. Well, thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. You too. And where can people find you? You have? Oh yeah. Yeah, you're doing all, all kinds of, of stuff. Yeah. I am. 
Uh, so the Liv Harrison is kind of my branding because Liv Harrison was taken. We don't know her, but anyway, I'm the, <laughs> so don't confuse us. I don't know what she's selling. <laughs> I'm not selling it. Uh, on Instagram, the one and only. The Liv Harrison. Yeah, the one and only. And mm -hmm. thelivharrison.com. So I have a newsletter and it's getting pretty active and I've got an incredible podcast mm -hmm. that I am falling hard for. And it's called Talk mm -hmm. to Me with Liv Harrison. And it's not exclusively Catholic. That's kind of my it. little thing in the world. So if you want to nice. go learn about some pretty amazing people, I just interviewed a Grammy Award winner this week. I've had a Gold Olympian, uh, NFL players, and then I've got my Catholic friends. So I've got everybody on there and it's, new and it's doing really well. So yeah, that so is come amazing. check it out, talk to me. Yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. So those are, those are my main lines. Hopefully I'm going to wink at her. Hopefully I'll get Stacy on my podcast. How's that going? <laughs> is that going well? Well, you know. I mean, I've been like putting on the public pressure, right? Like I your mean, people, you your people can We're talk to my right. people. <laughs> great i'll have my 10 year old call you <laughs> yeah fancy. she can talk to my my uh, my two-year-old who does Perfect. all my bookings for me yes we'll yes. be in touch <laughs> my agent yeah, oh i would be so, so honored yeah. that'd be great yes they live harrison and talk to me come find me come hang out with me you guys yes i love it oh my gosh that sounds great okay well, thank you for being a genius <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Thank and my you. conference, which isn't around right now, but you know, so whatever. When it's not pause, COVID. COVID pause, yes. Yes, But exactly. thank you, friend. This was fun. So fun. Okay. So much love to you, Liv, all the way in Texas. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>